What's up, guys? You're watching Spicy Vietnam. Hey, Annie, what's in store for today? Well, I heard that PT really likes something, you know, hot, like hot food, hot music, hot females, hot stuff. How do you know all this? <laughs> that is correct, actually. As a matter of fact, today we're going to check out four of the hottest, sexiest movers and groovers in the DJ world. And I know that PT is going to be very jealous because I will be interviewing two hottest female DJs. What? Can we swap? No. But don't worry, because I have a treat for you afterward. I'm going to take you to one of the best fine dining restaurants in town, the Bothau restaurant. Ooh, OK, that's a deal. But we are also going to catch up with Ham Tran, a very, very popular Vietnamese filmmaker. Friend of mine, let's go do it now. Holla, holla. Michael and her music is the harmony of youth, uniqueness, beauty, and mystic. I'm very lucky today to have a chat with Michael herself and her very talented band. So, how did your band begin? After traveling around the world the last two years, I came back here. I started to look at the musicians who can play my new songs, and I found these guys here. Yeah. I told them about my project. That is the combination between Vietnamese traditional sounds and Western instruments. I've heard that uh, you guys have five members from five different countries, right? How does that work with you know so many different cultures and does it influence your work? Well, it's an honor to play not only for her because the music to me, very emotional heartfelt emotion, a lot of drama in her music. And I just want to make sure I can do the best job possible for her, as well as my great, fantastic international bandmates. Latin music fits into the world music genre? Latin music have the groove, have their own sound, their own soul, which my member is Gabby. He's not here, but he brings the Latin soul for my band. Example, I have a song that we connect Latin parts to the European parts together. When you combine that with like traditional Vietnamese folkloric music and traditional Vietnamese um, instruments for a really interesting sound, which you will see later tonight. There's some really wonderful Vietnamese in instruments. I would not know the name of them. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea, but that I know I could take back to Nashville apply to blues, country music, swing, all kinds of things. So there's some really uh, interesting, unique Vietnamese percussion instruments. Is there any exciting plans coming up for you guys? Any projects? We are planning to make the album. I really want to bring Vietnamese to the world because Vietnamese language sounds very beautiful. Do you ever need time to be alone and away from the spotlight, and uh, why? Music is my life. I do all the best, all my best for music. I, I really enjoy playing with her because she's so passionate. I really care so much. I, I don't even know how, but I just get into it when I'm... Yeah, I would assume very important. I've dedicated a great deal of my life to it, and uh, I guess what's most important is being true to the, the instrument to the 1970s style that I really embrace and try to bring to whoever I work with, especially the boss. Here. <laughs> we wish you all the best, and we can't wait to uh, listen to your upcoming album. We're yeah, my boy, boy. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Spicy Vietnam. Vietnam.
You know what the beautiful thing about this is? We're sitting right along the Saigon River. It's, it's not only beautiful, but it's timeless as well. So if you guys are looking for some place to relax and enjoy the moment, this is the kind of place that I would suggest. Cheers. Cheers. Do you know what sort of tacos we're having? Mm. We're gonna have some barbecue smoked pork nachos. Oh, jalapenos. I love jalapenos. And these are the, uh, the wings. These look hot and look spicy. Yes, that's why it's perfect for us, the buffalo wings. This is a good sauce. Oh my goodness. I can see there's only like six pieces and I feel like we should order another one already because it's that good. <laughs> can you eat chili? Mm-hmm. All of the flavor just blending perfectly together. It has that perfect crunchiness, sour cream, the avocado and the tomatoes, and that chili is really nice too, and the pork is very tender. Jalapenos, yeah, I love jalapenos. They're the best. Try the wing. Blue cheese. All right, I want to try this nacho. Mmm. The wings are spicy. Yo! Can smoked swordfish tacos will clear you in a minute. And I'm gonna have my chicken burritos. I'm looking forward to that. I have to take oh a picture God. of this because this is seriously black and soppy. Wow. There's a lot of salads and vegetables mm -hmm. and also mango here. So oh, this mango. is That's interesting. Yes. So this is a very healthy dish. Okay, so where do I start? Is this just fried in uh... butter and garlic? Butter and garlic. Mm. Mm. Have some of the fish. It's very simple, it's very, but it's very like tasty. Now, do I need lemon on this or no? Well, I did sprinkle a little bit of lemon already. Mm. I actually thought that the fish might have been dry, but it isn't. It's just that smoky taste, and it falls apart in your mouth when you bite it. Yes. Very nice. A little bit blackened, but it's actually very tender. I like a good garden salad too. Chicken burrito, huh? Oh, the presentation is I beautiful. Know. Tell me if you agree with this. Okay. Only a little bit, bit here. It's shredded chicken. You have a little bit of rice in there, so it's kind of like a risotto type sort of style in this wrap burrito. Yes. You have a little bit of avocado. Yes. A little bit of tomato here. A little bit of sour cream. And tell me if I'm wrong. See all the flavors? Oh my God. I'm normally used to burritos that you can hold mm -hmm. or wrap up, but this is just on a plate because it's got all the cheese and sauce over it. It's mm. amazing. Like, the flavors are perfect, and the chicken's so tender, right? Exactly. I think that's the important part. Wow. If the chicken was dry, then I think this dish would fail, but it isn't. If you can experience all the different types of food. And that's the reason why we're here with Spicy. Yes. Ah. It was more of like a banana crepe. Yes. I love banana crepe. So I'm gonna have their famous chocolate lava cake. I know that the chef here, they're not going to disappoint me. Oh, it's oozing out. It looks delicious, okay? <laughs> no, 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 stay away. I'm gonna enjoy. Do you wanna eat mine or? I'll stay with mine. Okay. <laughs> uh, always gotta have ice cream, I love ice cream. Well. Go for it, enjoy your banana. Mmm. My chocolate lava cake's tender on the outside. It's oozing from the inside. It's just completely perfect. Chocolate syrup, banana inside, wrapped around this beautiful frame. Mm. So if you're here in Saigon, don't forget to check out the boathouse. The boathouse. And you're not going to be disappointed. Ciao. Mm. I've been DJ for two years, but I always have difficulty to find time to balance between my work and my family, also my friends and stuff. So I wish that like 26 hours a day, but it doesn't happen, so I do it the most I can. I see. So have you ever regretted postponing your study to pursue, you know, being a DJ? 
I want to, but I, I wasn't have a lot of idea what should I work at that time. And then I stopped for like a year and I wanted to start a scholarship in Canada. But then my career started kicking in and I was wondering like, why don't I just spend a little bit of time for my career before I leave this country and very lucky for me. That year, I started to like delay my study. Then my career started taking off, and I will not regret it because I have a lot of fun with it, and it's it's my best age right now. So, now yeah. I'm just a little bit curious: is there any misunderstanding or misconcept about you know female DJ here in Vietnam? Female DJ is like I don't have silicone, <laughs> and most of the female DJ in here have silicone. And that, sh that should work, you know, that's attention, the thing you like, and that should work. But if you want to go international, Silicon not going to help you. It's going to be music first, and your knowledge, your music skill, because you go outside the country, you compete with international standard skill, and you sit down with artists to talk about music, your knowledge had to be like 1990s to like 2015. You have to know all about that, so it's not going to work in the long term. A lot of new music is coming in and um, it's just still kind of developing. That's leave a lot of space for you to explore. I want it to be more vibrant scenes, different promoters doing different sounds and I want that kind of stuff to happen to uh, Vietnam. Not just a popular music scene, there's a vibrant underground scenes as well. Khi em đến với nghề DJ thì lúc đó em 16 tuổi bước lên cái sàn DJ mình diễn đó. họ rất là tò mò nên là em rất thích cái điều đó thử thách đối với em đó là nó đòi hỏi cái sự kiên trì đối với uh, nghề DJ của em nhiều hơn đó. nghề DJ thì người ta không nghĩ là mình vô đó mình chơi nhạc nhưng mà người ta nghĩ mình ăn mặc quá sexy rồi vô đó rồi show cái thể hình của mình ra chứ không phải là uh, chơi nhạc để cho mọi người uh, am hiểu về âm nhạc trang phục mà để mình biểu diễn trong cái phong cách đó nó có một chút sexy năm nay thì em đã được uh, lọt vào top 31 của nữ thị trai thế giới trong khi đó còn được uh, đọc giải Miss thị trai của tháng 10 2015 <cười> I love to share my the music that I love with other people. I've been DJing for 15 years now. I play uh, trance and techno back then. Is that something that you found was hard learning DJing or a lot of hard work and I put a lot of time in the studio to create the music. You have to tell a story that makes you stand out among the others. How does it feel to be number one or listed as number one here? <laughs> Of course, it uh, feels great, but at the same time, a lot of pressure. The future is always about making new, mu new music. I just did a tour to celebrate 15 years of my career. Wow. Yeah, in uh, 2016, I have a new album coming up on my label, ADA DNA Music. That's <laughs> awesome. nghề của em em phải nâng cao nó nhiều hơn nữa thì em đang học cái drag string á nghề DJ mà nó là âm nhạc điện tử mình phải update nó lên nếu mình dừng chân lại là mình sẽ thua và là không ai quan tâm mình nữa The underground scenes for me is always been a comfort because when I play underground parties, I, I felt comfortable. Nobody comes to me and asks, can you play this or that, or force me to do anything. So I, I felt more free. The more an artist or anyone felt free, they can express themselves more and create better products, I guess. I bring people the happiness, they trust our work through the day and in the evening they go, they want to hear some good music and good vibes and I provide that. I can see they come, they shake my hands, they give me compliments and that's, that's the best feeling ever. You know? I want a big, very big international fan base wow. for me to let me keep providing my music and good vibes to people and make everyone happy. Hello, this is Kelly and you're watching Spicy Vietnam.
What's up, viewers of Spicy Vietnam? PD Magic here, and I'm chilling with the head chef of Pop Fries, Calvin Bowie. Calvin Bowie here, Pop Fries, Vietnam. Welcome to Spicy TV, everybody. Yeah, man, so it's good to see you back in the kitchen. But uh, let's talk history. Why fries and why here? You know, we have a lot of good fries here. We have four flavors from all around the world. And we really try to focus on food that comes from the heart. You know, putting yourself on the plate and saying, hey, you know what, this is who I am. A lot of the flavors that you'll have right now are from areas that I've traveled through. Japan, Mexico, Korea, even Italy. So these are things that, flavors that I know of. Coming up, you'll see some more flavors, some more dishes, and you'll see some of my travels throughout my food. And you said you have one flavor that you'd like me to try. It's a Korean gorilla. <laughs> Korean pulled pork. I make my own gochujang barbecue sauce made out of scratch. I do a pan-fried kimchi on top with a farm-fresh egg. Oh, crack that egg open, let it ooze right. down, ooze it down. So, Mr. Calvin Bowie, where are these so-called Kurilla fries? You want those Kurilla fries? You can't handle those Kurilla fries. What? Man. Let me Bring show you on. how it's done already. That's why I call wow, Korean fries. That is Korean this pork pork. This isn't French fries. That is French fries. No, but look at it. It's it's gourmet. It's not gourmet. It's fast casual. It looks so nice. I don't want to eat it. Where do I start? Well, of course you got to pop it. Do I need this? This is my homemade paparazzi sauce. Spicy, but it's flavorful. And enjoy. Mm. Is it good? I like the fresh. Crunchy crispness of the fries, and then you get the flavor from the sauce. It's the combination of the crispy, crunchy fry, and then the sauce that just hits your tongue at the end. Like, oh, what was that crunchy? You put this in front of our our, our team, yeah. our crew. Yeah. They're gonna devour it like in seconds. Can you see what I'm seeing? I, I, I can see what you're saying. Yeah. I really can see what he's talking about here. You know. <laughs> What's up, Spicy Vietnam? Ham Tran, a very, very popular Vietnamese filmmaker with successful titles such as How to Fight in Six Inch Heels, Polo, and the latest Bitcoin Heist. Before directing such successful movies, he's also known as an editor for such titles as The Rebel, Fool for Love, and The Big Boss. Ham, welcome to the segment. Nice to be here. Yeah. Why? Uh, did you choose the direction to do movies or making films in Vietnam? I always wanted to make Vietnamese content film. And it's really hard to make that in the US and find an audience for it. Here in Vietnam, I mean, the cinemas need Vietnamese content right now. There's just a lot more opportunity. And how did growing up and studying filmmaking in America uh, help you uh, develop for what you want to do here in Vietnam? I went to UCLA Film School. I learned not only editing, but I learned I, I was focus puller. I was an AC, you know. You're gonna start somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I did sound, I did all this stuff. So it's just, it gives, it gives you the sort of boot camp, the basic training that you need. And then I think that what a director really sh should understand is the rest of the process of the filmmaking and not just, just directing the actor or directing for the camera. The only reason why I agreed to come back to Vietnam to do it was because of the script. It was so well written. Like I was laughing out loud, I was turning the pages. And then once I got back here, um, it's just I was offered like a chances to direct. But the good thing is, just like production companies going, what films would you like to make? 
It's not just, here, we have this script here. Can you make this? Can you make that? They just said, what would you like to do? And so I was like, okay, well, I have my horror film. Nhìn nó ghê lắm không? Tôi dắt mấy ốc trên mặt nó rồi. Nhìn cũng đỡ. I think the different genres of film comes with different things that I love about filmmaking. I just like being on set and working with creative people. I just love the process of filmmaking. We all play a part. I mean, because I, I don't see filmmaking as, oh, the director is the be all end all or the only person, you know. You have all these people in front of the camera, you have all these people behind the camera, and they all bring their talents, you know. I'm hoping that I'm also contributing to push the envelope on, on the craft of, of filmmaking as well. Because we see the same shots used over and over again. And also the same actors. Yeah. So what I like to do with every film is I want to just find some, somebody new. That's, that's a privilege. So it doesn't matter if it's like, oh, I only have this much or I don't like this. If you don't like the subject, make it better, you know? Use the opportunity to make it your own. You have to approach it with like, bring everything you got and make it yours. So the goal is to be a director. So what inspired you to become that? Well, my all-time favorite filmmaker, well, I have many since, you know, I, I watch a lot of films <laughs> too much sometimes, but my, my all-time favorite is Stanley Kubrick. And then my next all-time favorite filmmaker is Ang Lee. And I think they all have, actually, Ang Lee's, in a way, I think he's actually following in Kubrick's, you know, direction as well, and you know, Danny Boyle. Because those are filmmakers that make a different film with every film that they make. Stan Lee's always the first to, like, dive into a new genre, and then his film becomes the standard of that genre. He'll make a sci-fi film, it's 2001. You know, he made it, what, 1969, and here we are, and nobody has ever reached that level yet. The closest was, what, Gravity. That's the kind of director that I aspire to be, um, the auteurs that create their own vision, and they leave a mark in whatever genre that they're, they're doing. Your latest project, any, any sort of sneak peek? or? Uh, well, yeah, the project is, uh, is a remake. Right? And a lot of people go, yeah, why would you do a remake? With all the films that you can do, why would you do a remake? Um, it's a friend of mine's so film. <laughs> he's, he's a Thai filmmaker, his name is Matt, and, and uh, I met him through my wife. He makes these comedies that are just so awesome. They're so down to earth, and they're wacky, but they're funny, and they have a lot of heart. I remember watching ATM, so this new film is called ATM. <laughs> We have a really amazing cast that we're working with and um, an amazing you know, production team. Well, you got your, your best friend, Lamba. Yes. Who did, um, who was AD? Yeah, he and was AD. Six Inch on, he was co producer on uh, Six Inch Heels. He was my original producer for my short film. Um, What's your wish? Short film? That was. Ngayo. Ngayo. Yeah, yeah. Top 10, nominated top 10. Top 10 for the Oscar in 2004. 2004. Can I use this opportunity to make a call to, you know? Yeah. I'm going to make a casting call for editors. Because I'll tell you the one thing that you cannot find in Vietnam are editors. And I would train the editor if they want to come and, and you know, just intern on, on, on one of my films. Well, there you have it, folks. A little insight on Ham Tran there. I hope you've seen all of his movies. that haven't. Try and get out there. and uh, So thank you, Ham. Yeah, thanks, B. Coming up next, we'll have Ding Gai, a singer-songwriter who's called the Prince of the Ballad. Let's enjoy some contemporary dance from the jungle through to the opera house. For hot food, let's try some broken rice, a popular dish for both locals and tourists alike. And don't forget some wonderful sweet soup. Finally, an exclusive interview with the king of the Vietnamese film industry, actor Tai Hoa.